I hope you're packed and ready to go. Today's episode, we're taking you on the road. Berlin, for me, it's a big creative hub full of artists from all over the world. The project that we have coming up in Chile, I'm really excited about because I really think that it's important to embrace where you come from. Hello and welcome to CBC Arts Exhibitionists, your weekly adventure through the Canadian art scene. I am your resident travel guide, Amanda Paris. For the next 30 minutes, we are going on a journey from Berlin to Cape Dorset, Cape Dorset to Chile, and Chile to rural Alberta. Let's get started. Have you ever noticed that whenever you arrive in a new place, your senses get heightened? You take in sights and sounds in a whole new way. For an artist, it can be the perfect stimulation to inspire new creations. That's exactly what happened to Vancouver-based artist Andrea Wan when she arrived in Berlin. This one, I was trying to get into this elevator, small elevator to my own space, and there are so many naked guys in the way. <laughs> this was a dream. Hi, I'm Andrea Wan. I'm an artist and illustrator based in Berlin. Berlin, for me, it's a big creative hub full of artists from all over the world. And it really symbolized freedom for me because the place is big and there are so many different scenes. Doesn't matter what you like, there are many options you can choose from. When I went to art school, I kind of came across different surrealist techniques, like such as automatic writing, automatic uh, drawing, which relaxes your mind and just kind of let your intuition flow naturally. For me, that really allows the subconscious to surface up and just letting whatever comes. These are some ideas that I just sketched when I was like, I don't know, half asleep, and now I'm discovering them again. Also, I'm inspired by dreams a lot, and I think a lot of things that we try to hide or pretend during the day, it doesn't lie, like dreams doesn't lie, it always tells the truth. I feel like I, I can understand myself more deeply using this practice. I used to keep a dream journal for years. I still do. And I think it's a good practice because the more you write about your dreams, the more you remember. Also to understand the symbols in the dream what, and the message is trying to tell me. Oh, this woman took my chandelier off the ceiling while dancing. <laughs> Well, a couple of years ago, I used to be inspired by more from the external world. For example, the shift of identity, because I've been moving a lot from Hong Kong to Canada, from Canada to Berlin. And now I'm more into simpler things like shapes and colors in nature, things that makes me feel happy when I'm doing it. On the weekend, sometimes I like to go to the botanical garden to sketch and hang out with my friends. And I think it's just a really nice place to hang out and escape from the busy city centers. The inspiration from nature is infinite. There's different color palettes, shapes and forms. I actually drew this plant a couple of years ago for my last series even before I came here, and then I realized that, oh, this is the plant I drew. Like, most leaves are symmetrical, but check out this one. It's like, especially designed like this, off-centered. My studio in Berlin is at Urban Spree. There used to be a lot of uh, squats and abandoned buildings and areas like this 
But now, due to gentrification, the city changed a lot over the last 10 years or so. This is, I guess, one of the last space in Berlin that offers like a free space for creatives. I feel very fortunate to be here. <laughs> We have a lot of ground to cover on our journey today, but I want to take a moment to do a little time travel. Over the past season, we've had some really amazing exhibitionists in residence, aka EIRs, and some of them have created pretty memorable videos to introduce themselves to you. If we were to make a Hall of Fame for EIR videos, this next one would definitely make the cut. You'll be seeing some of Dylan Glynn's artwork throughout the episode, but first, please meet Dylan in all his wonderfully dramatic glory. Thanks for coming by and forced me to clean up. Hey guys, I'm Dylan Glenn and I'm your exhibitionist in residence this week. This week you're gonna be checking out my emotional, melancholic, and just plain crazy animations. I hope you enjoy them and hey, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Yoga Boy Crush. Our love, my fiction, excitement that turns to obsession, is love that turns to hate in a second. Coming up, we're about to meet a 13-year-old who will totally steal your heart while carving an Anukshuk out of serpentine rock. Welcome back. We're heading from the busy streets of Berlin to the snowbanks of Nunavut. We sent our filmmakers out there in the middle of winter to meet an incredible 13-year-old artist with a knack for telling stories, drawing pictures, and stealing hearts. He does it all while walking us through his artistic process, one that is rooted deeply in his home of Cape Dorset. My name is David Pudla. I am 13 years old. I love to carve and draw. I lived in Cape Dorset my whole life. My favorite in school is art and gym. I don't remember the time that I didn't like art. I love to draw on my sketchbook. I love to draw a bullhead whale. And I love to draw walrus because my dad goes walrus hunting a lot. I learned how to carve from my dad. My dad made this. I hope he cut one. He's out hunting right now. If he cut one, I want if it climbs in the belly. The first thing that I carve is an inukshuk. Inukshuk represents Nunavut. People choose a stone. They look for sizes and colors. I'm thinking to make something with this. I'm not sure. People use a grinder, and I use a saw, 
and file it. First, I make a line and then I saw some of it. Usually in chips, there's six, six rocks. Oh, almost. It looks like a human, but they got frogs. I've carved a bird and a milkshake yes. and a fish. And now to sand it. Sanding is my favorite part. And I'm gonna have to polish it. I wish it was summer. I would carve more. Six or seven years old, I yeah. drew a man trying to catch a seal. Some person said, you're good, and then just started to practice more. Yeah, it's done. In the future, I like to be an <laughs> artist. Making art is fun, and I want to keep doing it. Making art is fun, and I want to keep doing it. Now that's a life philosophy I can get behind. Yeah, so that warm and fuzzy feeling that David left us all with, it's about to disappear completely as we step into what feels like an episode of Black Mirror, with a Canadian Prairie twist. We're driving down a long country road in rural Alberta to visit the Museum of Fear and Wonder. It's the place where objects that have had a curious life come to retire. I don't want to say too much, but just look out for the doll. I'm Jude Griebel, and um, I'm originally from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I now work as a visual artist, and I'm based in Brooklyn, New York, and in Alberta. My name is Brendan Griebel, and I'm an archaeologist up in the, the Canadian Arctic. Also, I live between uh, Alberta and Montreal. The Museum of Fear and Wonder is located in rural Alberta near a small town named Bergen. We're kind of a destination that you have to seek out, or perhaps you'll just see it by chance off the side of a highway and go investigate. Fear and Wonder contains Jude and I's kind of lifetime collection. The best definition or scope of the collection is objects with emotional qualities or emotionally uncomfortable in some way, whether it's awe-inspiring or fear-provoking or objects that have been involved in some way with other people's emotions over their, their life history. The collection contains objects that have a sense of story and narrative to them, and we feel that just by looking at those objects without any sort of back story, you can sort of have an idea that they had a complicated history or emotions were projected onto them in a certain way. A lot of the objects we feel sort of speak to human experience and stories. And a lot of them, for that reason, are anatomical figures or have to do with certain anatomy. Quite an interesting object that we have here is a doll, and it was made in the 1930s in Texas. It's from an old estate in Lagrange, Texas. And it's a handmade doll crafted from textile and leather, obviously based on a certain child, and it stands the height of a child and is the weight of a child. The previous collector who had owned it believed it was changing places in her apartment on its own, and so she needed to get rid of it, and so it found its home here at the museum. So this is another piece that, that's quite unique at the museum. Um, it was created in the 1970s by a prisoner on death row at the Angola Penitentiary in Louisiana. And so he spent his, his final days creating this chess set, obviously reflecting on his life. It's very indicative of prison craft. These are dyed with shoe polish. So they're very kind of interestingly carved, very kind of folk carving, not terribly detailed, but really effective and really kind of emotional characters. 
I really like the idea that, that this person's final days are, are quite literally played out again and again and again by different people in different configurations. That person's legacy in a way of being continually played out and him thinking about what he had done in his final days. This is one piece I'm really interested in in the collection. It's a Dust Bowl era dollhouse um, that was built um, in the Appalachian Mountains. I'm, I'm interested in, in it for a number of reasons. Um, one being the material, it's created from barnwood and sort of found materials from that time that really sort of speak of the economic depression in that area. And it seems like it was made for, um, very lovingly crafted for one child in particular. And I'm also interested in it because it reminds me a lot of the abandoned prairie farmhouses that sort of um, dot Alberta and Saskatchewan. We kind of see as ourselves as building a, a collection of stories um, based around these objects through the process of, of engaging people. I think through the museum we're trying to expand our own ideas surrounding the objects. So conversations um, with people or groups coming through, people with similar interests who are making the drive out here specifically to see these objects and talk about them with us. That really serves us in a way and it'll help us, um, you know, it'll definitely expand our thinking around the project and I can see the project developing in that respect. Coming up, this next musician has won awards and performed at the Olympics, but it was a trip to his father's homeland that truly changed his life. We've been to Europe, the Arctic, and the prairies, and now we're heading to Latin America. For many of us whose parents come from somewhere else, there can be a gap, a distance that can't be closed until you journey back to that homeland. That's what happened to Def3, a rapper from Regina, when he traveled to Chile and built a musical connection with his dad. Rap, <laughs> hip hop, recording of the year goes to Def3, wildlife! Oh yeah. Ten steps ahead, never settle for less. Number oh, yeah, three yeah, on the crest when I'm put to the test. The EF bring it fresh like a fish to a net. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, who would have thought? Yeah, big up. Wildlife. Like some wolves in the trees, creep through the prairies. We hunt while they sleep. Keep six in the meadow. Count sheep with my fellows. Guess my troubles goodbye to the future. Say hello. My name is Danny Fernandez, also known as Def3. I'm a hip hop artist from Regina, Saskatchewan. From Regina, yo, and moved to Vancouver. But now it's time to get it. Welcome to my show. It's off the beaten path. We take the side road. This is the place to be. We get in live with you. You know, I think if you're making music, you need to be very serious about it. It can't be a hobby. It has to be a full time job and some and so if, if I'm not doing it you know someone else out there is going to be working just as hard so I make I have to make sure that I am working as hard as I possibly can in order to succeed <laughs> The project that we have coming up in Chile, I'm really excited about because I feel like I'm very immersed in hip hop culture, but not so much in my roots from where from where I come from. And so this trip is kind of what I'm hoping that is going to fill that void in my life. So it's like, because I really think that it's important to embrace where you come from. So the focus of this trip as far as, as where we're going and what we want to accomplish, we chose the city of Viña del Mar, which is where my father was born and where he was raised. Half of the city actually meets up with another city called Valparaiso. So between the two, they're kind of known as, I guess, the art and music kind of capital of the country. Over the past little bit, me and my dad have been making more music together and we had a band together for a while. So I'm really excited to meet him down here and be able to play with our family and, and just kind of like get immersed more in the culture. So being able to show my family more of what I do with music and art is really special to me. And so I think that this opportunity is really gonna change and influence you know, the music that I'm making, the art that I'm making. Danny, going to Chile, it means a lot because it's embracing, you know, my root, he embracing my culture, and the, he loved the people, and 
everything is down there, the music and all that. So it is wonderful. Have you ever seen the end of the earth? Well, I have, and it's beautiful. The culture, the people, even colors are unusual, immovable, like waters of the ocean or a mountain. After this trip, I've really felt like it's inspired me in, in so many ways that now all I want to do is is create. It's weird. I'm almost addicted to, to the art form again, and I've really realized that uh, you know what's important to me, and I'm definitely feeling refueled and recharged, and I'm really excited to see where it goes, and I'm really looking forward to channeling this energy into more music and more art. Share an existence impaired yet persistent. The moment of surprise and the parts that are inconsistent. The misfits and outcasts, limos and must-haves. Millions of people that's pimping it for a bus pass. The secrets of time that are hidden beneath our feet. Battles that have been turned of a history incomplete. So unique, skills that every one of us has. And once uncovered and fulfilled, still ain't even the half. If there's an artist you think should be on CBC Arts Exhibitionists, let us know. Send us a message on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Our handle is at CBC Arts. I'll be back next time with even more artists from Martinsville to Cohensville. Until then, keep creating and innovating. But before I go, I'm gonna send you a little postcard in the form of a time-lapse video. It's by artist Lauren Peary, who uses acrylic ink to create her illustration called Wish You Were Here. Peace.